Hey butterflies, welcome to my channel. Thank you so much for tuning in. My name is Ruby. It's nice to officially introduce myself to you guys. So today I'm gonna to be talking about how to create your own guided meditation, specifically for shadow work and healing work and the benefits of it. Um, so I do have a video on what shadow work is if you guys wanna check that out in detail. But uh, it's basically your dark side, your dark emotions, like your demons that we don't really want to face or we've kind of pushed aside, you know, anger, hurt, just embarrassment, guilt, shame, anything that we have locked up back there that we need to face, okay? Um, so in order to do this, all you need is a voice recorder and that's it. So of course the primary goal is healing, but ultimately this is an exercise in order to elevate yourself on a conscious and subconscious level, okay? So that's what I'm really going to be getting into today. So I'm going to break it down to three parts and I'll leave the timestamps down below. They all relate to each other so I would recommend watching the entire thing and just taking away from it what you may, whatever applies to you, whatever resonates with you. Um, but the first part is all about manifesting so if you're not interested in that topic and you want to forward to just the healing work um, and that aspect, the practicality aspect of it, then you can go ahead and do that. So like I said, part one is going to be about manifesting. Uh, where it all came from, right? Because there's a lot of videos on how to manifest, how I manifested my dream job, my dream relationship, uh, how I manifested $500, 10000 like whatever, right? But um, I want to bring it back to the basics. Like where does that come from? Why is it that when you vibrate higher and um, align with the universe, that the universe brings it to you? Like where does that idea even come from? Part two will be the practical benefits and just any other side notes about shadow work and creating your own meditations. And then part three will be the blueprint, what I've used um, to create the guided meditation, how I'm using the chakra system, why I'm using the chakra system, and all of that stuff. And I will be making a video for each chakra point, so I'm not going to dive too deep into it, but today it's going to be just an overall uh, view and I'm just gonna go over the shadow work as a whole. Just a reminder the focus of this is healing at the end of the day So it doesn't matter what you believe in or what you don't believe in. We all believe in energy We know energy exists um, and the only thing you require is an open mind to self-awareness and an open heart to self-compassion in order to tackle these things within yourself. I also want to say this isn't to take away from any existing guided meditations There's so many out there for different reasons this is specifically for shadow work for yourself, okay? And I'm, like I said in part two, I'll explain why. The main point of this is exercising the belief that you are your own creator, your own healer, your own protector, your own everything, okay? So you don't need to go outside of yourself to look for answers. The answers are always within you. And you hear this all the time, right? Everyone always tells you to look within, look inside of yourself. And you're just like, okay, but where? <laughs> but where? Um, so this exercise is going to help you get to that where. And it's a process. It's going to be different for everybody. So just, you know, do what feels most comfortable for you. And I'm so grateful that we're in a time where we can come on YouTube and just listen to other people's experiences and grasp the parts that work for us. We do have that advantage and we should use it. But the ultimate goal is to get enough pieces to put the puzzles together ourselves, form our own perspective, our own truths and not have to rely on anyone else for answers, right? If you take away anything from this video, let it be that there's a difference between looking for answers and looking for knowledge. Because when we're looking for answers, there's a sense of being lost, there's a sense of losing control, not being in control. Like, what's going on? What should I do? Why did this happen? How do I move past this thing? There's like an infinite list of questions that we are trying to get to and answer, resolve, come to a resolution, whatever, right? And we all go through this and it's necessary, right? We need that guidance to get us to a certain place. But the ultimate goal is to get enough pieces to build or rebuild yourself so that way you are now just looking for knowledge instead of answers because you know that the answers are within, are inside, okay? Because knowledge is power. Knowledge is infinite. Knowledge is all around us. And, you know, we, we can never stop growing, elevating, learning, right? We can take knowledge to change our perception on things or elevate ourselves. So instead of being in a state of looking for answers, you want to be in a state of adding knowledge to your own perspective and your own truth and your own everything, okay? So you don't need other people's guided meditations, frequency music, tarot readings, horoscope, crystals, whatever, right? These are all tools at the end of the day to help us. They're tools. But the ultimate guidance is what you create in your mind. And that's the point. So let's get into part one. How does this connect to manifesting? So there are so many videos on this, right? 
um, how to manifest, visualize it, feel it, mean it. They say the universe brings it to you as long as you are in alignment, as long as you are vibrating higher, on your higher frequency, good vibes only. You know, all that good stuff. But it's like, what does that mean? How do I get there? You know, so I'm going to like just, you know, back, back, back it up and bring it back to the beginning. So you may or may not have heard the phrase as above, so below. And this is a core phrase that is used in people who are master manifestors and who understand how the universe works. So what this means is as above the universe, the cosmos, so below the earth. And you can also apply that to yourself, right? As above in your mind, in your spirit, in your soul so below um which is your reality your physical right so what's in your mind you're creating in your reality and that's why they say your thoughts are so powerful your speech is powerful and this is also what they mean by you are the universe right like the universe created us we are in the universe and the universe is a part of us so not only are we a direct uh, extension of the universe but we're also a direct reflection of the universe okay so that means because you are the universe you have the ability you have the power to create just as the universe has done and continues to do and your only limits the only limitations are the ones that you have placed on yourselves or accidentally allowed others to place on you okay that's why they say if you can think it you can achieve it that's where all this comes from. So you can look at this whichever way you want. As Stephen Hawking says, the explosion of the universe was caused by dark energy, the Big Bang Theory. So you can look at it that way. I'm going to be talking about Egyptian mythology with New and Newt, okay? And you don't need to believe in God uh, and in deities, like I said, because it's really about the story behind the gods. It's about the symbolism and what it means. And if you apply it to the Big Bang Theory, it's basically the same thing, okay? So in Egyptian mythology, there's Nu and Newt. And I have the cards here to show you guys just a visualization. So this is Nu here. This is the male, the seed, the chaos, the darkness, okay? And this is Newt. She's the female, the creator, the order, the light, okay? And they both mean night, and one cannot exist without the other, okay? They go together. They are one. So this is where the idea of manifesting comes from. The universe created through chaos, through darkness. And because you are the universe, you also have the ability to do that. And secondly, like I said, as above, so below, what's happening in your mind, in your spirit, is going to reflect below in your reality. So the importance of this story, the meaning, the symbolism is that through darkness, through chaos, through rock bottom, through the traumas and the worst moments of your life, or at the very least your shadow, because we all have a shadow self, comes creation, right? Creation brings life and light. This is why in my perception, it's not about remaining positive at all times. It's about shifting and directing the chaos to a creative energy. And that doesn't mean being an artist, okay? Creation exists in all forms. Um, and in my eyes, it was not light that brought creation. It was the creation, the order of the chaos that brought the light, which is why it's not enough to just be love and light and think positive. You have to go through the darkness. You have to go through the chaos because one cannot exist without the other. And this is why you can manifest from a dark place because creating transmutes energy. This is why when musical artists go through heartbreak, the fans low-key love it because when Janae and Sean break up, they come out with some fire-ass music on both ends, right? So ultimately, manifesting isn't just about visualizing and vibrating higher. That is one way to do it, um, but it's not the only way. And when you, when you can do both, when you can be the creator and transmute your energy through creation and you can visualize and vibrate on a high energy that's when you can combine both and be the ultimate manifester be the ultimate creator of your own world of your own reality so why does all of this even matter because like i said not all of us go through crazy chaos and trauma right we all experience trauma on some level but it could feel very normal to you but we all have a shadow self regardless it's the human aspect it's the yin and yang and ultimately it's our fears shaped as past experiences that prevent us from going after certain things or believing that we deserve certain things, of course, on a subconscious level. Um, and of course, you can try to skip the healing work, skip the shadow work, and go straight into creation and transmuting your energy that way. But it's all about balance, right? You don't want to achieve your dreams uh, through what you create and then feel empty inside and be imbalanced like you see a lot of celebrities, right? Like that that's basically what happens to them. They, they were able to manifest all this abundance financially but they never balanced it out with 
the shadow work with what's going on behind the scenes with the subconscious and all that stuff so now there's that imbalance you know you want to have it all because you deserve it and you can um, but you first have to get to the place of understanding that you truly do deserve it and you truly can achieve it so the other aspect of manifesting is being in alignment right so what that means is you're vibrating higher you're on the same frequency all this stuff what does that really mean it just means um, being in a space of love, being in a space of feeling good, joy, spreading love, like knowing everything happens for a reason and all that good stuff, okay? Um, and diving into your shadows, okay, facing your chaos is the way to do that. And this is the part we tend to mess up on a little bit because in my opinion, there's two aspects to shadow work. So the first aspect, of course, is healing, right? But the second aspect is letting go letting go of what no longer fits into your life anymore shedding that skin shedding the old you and that doesn't mean you have to be a completely new different person you can be if that's what you you know feel like has to happen but it's just about shedding the parts that don't fit in anymore and sometimes that can be outside energy right other people and sometimes that could be inside energy and that's your self-limiting beliefs or how you approach situations, how you respond to situations, how you feel about situations, your perception on situations or yourself. Like there's so much to that, right? But you have to let it go in order for it to come in because some people will do the healing work. They'll uh, do the guided meditations and reflect and, you know, they'll feel like, okay, I'm in a better space now, but why isn't what I want coming in? And it's because you need to clear out space <laughs> for it to come in so that it can be in alignment. So that's what people mean by, you know, being in alignment. Um, and mind you, of course, everything is all about divine timing as well, being patient and it'll happen in timing. Um, but, you know, if you haven't let go of certain things about your past, about your past self, then focus on that. And as you let go, as you shed those aspects and you make space, right, it's, the space has to get filled. The space is going to get filled. So you can do the healing work and you can be on a whole new wave. But if you want your reality to reflect that, then you have to let go of old attachments. OK, um, and like I said, one of those things is knowing that you deserve what's coming to you. And that's such a small thing. It sounds so small, but it's huge because for the most part, we don't consciously think I don't deserve this. This is all happening subconsciously. That's why it's important to make sure that you are, you know, tackling every part of yourself to make sure you are not limiting yourself and not hiding parts of yourself anywhere and just owning who you are okay your spirit self and your human self okay we are a part of the universe the universe is in us and all of that stuff um but you know we were in a physical human form so we need to deal with those shadow emotions even the universe started with chaos and darkness so face the darkness okay don't be scared of your fears past the fears is where all the good stuff is okay that's where the sun's gonna come in okay that's where life is gonna be created and new energy new everything okay so in creating your own guided meditation for shadow work you're facing your chaos your darkness so that you can best discern how to direct it and where to direct it um, and this is the balance of the masculine feminine. This is where that comes from as well. When people always say you have to balance your masculine and feminine energies because the masculine is the chaos, the darkness, the seed. Um, and the feminine is the light, the creator that carries the seed, right? And one cannot exist without the other. So this is an inevitable process. We cannot avoid it, right? The turmoil, the bullshit that life throws at us, we cannot avoid it. So just dive deep into it and... Um, as you do that, you're exercising your muscle to create, to be your own voice and your own creator. So when you do come through to the other side, um, when you've shed your old skin and you know who you are and what you want, you can much more easily visualize, embody, internalize all these high frequencies that people talk about, right? The higher vibration, genuinely being positive. It's hard to genuinely be positive when you have all this muck back up in there whether you realize it or not, okay? So, and this is a continuous cycle, right? You can be someone who understands that everything happens for a reason and I'm such a positive person and it's all good, but at the end of the day, we're human, we go through things, we cannot help what we feel and you know react to things. So we are continually shedding old skin, just like the snakes. The snake is always shedding its skin and becoming a new version. It's not changing its core, you know, it's not becoming an entirely new being, but it's shedding what is not needed. Right. So just like that, as we 
evolve, as we progress, as we elevate onto new levels. Um, even when you're at a space where you're like, okay, I'm finally really, really, really happy and I'm really good. There's eventually going to be a space where you still have to look inwards, you know? We have to always reflect and that doesn't mean you have to do it every single day. Um, <laughs> like I said, you have to use your discernment and maybe once a week, maybe once every two weeks to start, whatever you are comfortable with, whatever you think you need. Um, but how much ever work you put in, that's how much you know, you're gonna get back. Anything you put into the universe, you get back tenfold. And the same thing applies to your healing. How much work you put into your healing, you will see reflected in your reality. I have been working on this, you guys for a while okay for a while and it felt like a never-ending journey and finally one day miraculously it felt, it felt like you know I just suddenly I had a shift where I started to feel good and it wasn't just one day it was just like it's kind of like going through heartbreak you know so to sum it up manifesting stems from creation and creation comes from darkness and chaos which is why making your own guided meditation for shadow work exercises your brain to shift your way of viewing and experiencing your darker emotions and that way you are simultaneously being your own creator you're being your own voice for that creator you know and that also ties into what people say about um speaking things into existence right it's exercising that as well and you know you can also make your own uh guided meditations to manifest and visualize not just shadow work right but we're focusing on shadow work for now because that's you can't skip it like i mean you can skip it but you need the balance we need to acknowledge the darker side okay all right so moving on to part two other benefits of creating your own guided meditation and other little side notes i have about shadow work first and foremost make sure you have a support system okay no matter who you are i don't care if you're like i don't trust anybody i only need myself whatever you know see, get a therapist see a therapist but everyone needs a support system okay and you have to use your own discernment in this case um you know do not ever compare yourself okay don't look at someone else's situation and think you can do the same thing even if they've gone through similar experiences and you're like well if they did it i could do it you know yourself best especially if you're someone who struggles with anxiety or panic attacks then you definitely want to take that extra step and that can mean, you know, asking a friend to be with you or be in the next room or even asking them to, hey, make sure, uh, can you make sure you pick up your phone uh, during this time period because I'm going to be, you know, doing my shadow work and just in case something, you know, happens and I, I need to talk to somebody, anything, okay? You need to have a support system and only you know what that support system should look like. Even for myself, I knew about shadow work for like a year um, before I fully dived into it and... That was because, um, actually, I don't even know why. I didn't really think about it, I guess. It was probably because I just didn't feel comfortable or safe enough to do so. But once I became a lot more uh, spiritually connected, I felt a lot safer in doing so. So that's when I started doing my shadow work. And of course, I still have uh, a support system to fall back on as well, if anything. So, okay. So that being said, one of the benefits to making your own meditations is that you're listening to your own voice. So you automatically feel a little bit more protected, right? And you feel like your higher self is guiding you. And in that, it becomes your higher self guiding you, you know? Secondly, you start to rediscover the power of your voice. And I feel like a lot of us <laughs> go through this where when we listen to our voice, it's like, we, we don't wanna hear it, it's weird. Um, I went through that when I started making my YouTube videos and it wasn't even through my YouTube videos that I became comfortable with it It was through the guided meditations I made for myself That's when I started being more comfortable with my own voice and listening to it So this can be really helpful if you have a hard time expressing yourself if you have a hard time speaking up uh, public speaking if you feel like you're really introverted all the time um, and you want to find your power find your authority find your voice um, this is a great way to do that, okay? And on the flip side, if you're someone who's uh, outspoken, like me, I'm, you know, I'm like, blah, 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 I'm a Sagittarius, okay? I'm a fire sign. My, my thoughts go from point B to point seven. It doesn't even make sense sometimes because I just blurt out <laughs> what's on my mind without thinking it through. It's just out there. 
So this has really helped me dial it back, tone it down, breathe a little bit. Okay, it's okay to breathe sometimes. And you discover those things when you listen to yourself, you know, when you hear yourself and you're like, okay, I need to just like relax there for a second and just catch a breath. It's okay to catch a breath. <laughs> You know, it's okay to speak up and it's okay to catch a breath and slow down, okay? You can find the balance in doing this as well. So number three is the power of speech and this kind of ties into number two and it also ties into manifesting. So of course, speaking things into existence, right? You are being your own creator. As you're speaking, you're creating these visuals and this, this is the part that kind of plays into it subconsciously, right? So you're being your own creator, you're being your own healer. Um, and in that, you come into your full power uh, where you don't have to, you don't feel like you have to persuade people and you have to argue with people. You just are and you just let things be. Number four, you're moving at your own pace. So shadow work can feel very overwhelming. The more you do it, the more that feeling subsides. But the beginning, it's like, ah, I don't know where to start. I don't even know what emotions I'm feeling. I don't know. So you can just do, you know, the basic and see what emotions arises within you um, and then work your way to certain situations and um, certain traumas. Or you know what the trauma is and you don't want to full on dive deep into it yet. So you can work your way there. And when you change, you know, parts of the meditation, and I really recommend you guys do that. And it doesn't need to be the one that I write. It could be anything. It can be one that you find online somewhere. It could be one that's already on a YouTube channel. So you can just, you know, copy the one that you have uh, listen to or something whatever but when you change the script when you change the words to your specific scenario you're painting a very a more graphic picture and you're able to be a little bit more focused on that and even through writing it or typing it um you're releasing in that sense too because even that is a form of uh releasing for some people you know so <laughs> there's so many aspects to this that help you release that help you face it so I see no loss here, I only see gain, okay? So the point is being your own creator. Just like the universe was in darkness and couldn't see what's ahead, there is just a, it's a black hole, it's in darkness. Um, it's okay if you feel that way too. It's okay if you feel like, I don't know what's gonna happen after this. I don't know what's gonna come out of this. I don't, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. It's okay, it doesn't matter, just do it, just do it, just do it, do it, do it, okay? And I cannot stress this enough, you guys, because I only have my experience as proof. I don't know if anyone else has talked about this or not, I don't know, but all I can say is I have made more progress um, in my life, in my healing, in my happiness, and just like everything by doing this in three months, in like a three month time period, than I did trying to heal in other ways in like a year and a half, you know? Yeah, so it's worth it. It's it's a little extra step where, you know, you have to type it out or read it out and record it and all that stuff, but it's worth it, I'm telling you guys. All right, so moving on to part three, creating your own guided meditation, the blueprint that I have used and why and all that stuff, how I came up with it. So like I said, you don't have to use this. You can use whatever you want, it's all up to you. You can use my blueprint and create your own in it, combine it, whatever. Um, so like I said, just use a voice recorder um, to make it and also choose a frequency music. That part is optional, but it's nice. And make sure you don't play it too loud because it doesn't like make sure it doesn't overpower your voice. You just need it to be faintly in the background for it to like resonate with you. And it's just, you know, a nice little background music, you know. Um, and if you don't know which frequency to use, that, that might have to be a whole other video on frequencies, but um, you can just Google it. And uh, I believe there, there are a list of like which uh, frequencies apply to what part of yourself you're trying to heal. There's a frequency for everything, okay? Just search it up on YouTube or Google, it will come up, okay? So what I'll be using is the chakra system and crystals to break down each areas and parts of ourselves to tackle. That way it's not too overwhelming, like I said. Um, so you don't need crystals or anything. It's all about visualization, like I said. So I'll be going through each chakra system, uh, what each chakra entails, the possible blockages in each chakra, whether overactive or underactive. So the meditation for this video, this one right here, is going to be based off a black crystal. And black crystals are generally about purification. So this is going to be um, a general shadow and healing work guide before diving into the individual chakras. So the entire concept and visual of my meditation is entering a crystal temple. And like I said, you don't have to be spiritual or religious to do this. It's all about energy, the energy of the crystal. Um, and it's just the energy that you are looking to balance and heal. It has nothing to do with 
this outside energy and outside force. You know, this energy, you can view this energy as an extension of yourself. This energy is you. It's the part of you that you kind of forgot or that you need to uh, remember and uncover again and embody again, okay? Because um, all of these energies are always within us. It's just, you know, blockages. It's been subsided. It's been... Um, in the shadows, you know, so we just need to uncover it. So this temple, this crystal, this energy is you. But, you know, if you if you are religious or spiritual, of course, you can um, visualize that energy being a higher being or whatever you would like. So I'll be using three crystals in each meditation and you can switch up the crystals with, you know, which one resonates with you the most or you can leave it as is. It's up to you. So with today's meditation, with the black crystals, you can use um, onyx, obsidian, jet, uh, hematite, whatever. Uh, I'm using onyx, it's stone of uh, protection and purification. And like I said, you can change anything you want to in the meditation. Um, mostly all guided meditations, it's very general, right? But the whole point is that you make it specific to you. So that visualization is much stronger, it's more graphic in your mind. So the visualization that I use is you walk into the temple and there's a well in the middle, okay? And the well is made out of a septarian druzy crystal. And I use the visuals of a septarian because the formation kind of looks like a stone, uh, like a stone well, and it's also created in the depth of the ocean. So when I gaze into the well, that's when I'm allowing for negative emotions to arise and show in the reflection of the water in the well, okay? So the third crystal will be the bucket. In this case, it'll be a ro rose quartz, um, a stone of unconditional love and compassion. So using that to reel the shadow emotion or situation to us and face it. Okay, so you're reeling, you're putting in the rose quartz bucket, reeling it up. And that specific reflection you just saw in the water, that shadow that you, uh, uh, that you just saw, you're facing it directly in your hands, in your, sorry, not in your hands, but in the bucket. It can be in your hands, whatever you want. So when you do this, you may feel called to cry, let out yelps or like, you scream because you're pissed off about something I don't know but whatever comes just allow it to be okay and on the flip side you may just be like you may just not be reactive at all um, and just observing but either way you're facing it um, and in doing that you are releasing it um, and you may not feel different after the first session after the second session after the third but trust and believe that it will help you it will affect change in the future okay it, it adds up it happens subconsciously before it comes to the conscious like it starts um impacting you on subconscious levels before you start seeing the change on the physical level just like as above so below it happens in your mind first right before it comes to the physical, to the reality, before you see it manifest into the reality. It's the same thing with healing. So either way, you're releasing it in your visualization. You visualize yourself having the tears fall down. Even if it's not physically falling down, let it fall and let those tears fall into the bucket and let that dark matter change, transmute, okay? So as your tears fall into the bucket, it goes from dark water to light water, okay? From chaos to creation from dark to light so you visualize your tears transforming transmuting this dark matter into light sparkly energy so this is another portion of the meditation that plays to your subconscious that plays to the creative force to the manifestation force okay because you are looking at dark matter a dark energy in front of you in this bucket and through your tears through the visualization of your tears transforming transmuting that energy into light into light sparkly energy, okay? Um, so I finished the meditation by pouring that energy, by pouring that light that uh, you just made back into the well, back into the universe, which uh, signifies, symbolizes um, the connection back to the universe, back to the collective, back to everyone, that we are all one. Um, and not just that, but you're, you're giving back to the universe, to the community, to your world. You know, you're not just keeping the light within you, you're spreading it back to the universe, back to the well. So these simple visualizations and steps may not seem like much at all, but they are the building blocks that transform you. And I vouch for this, like I said, I made more progress in a couple of months than I did in a whole year. <laughs> but it's all a process, right? And in that process, you will find progress. And 
you know, I do recommend space for yourself to meditate every day. A lot of people say this, a lot of people who meditate are like, just find five, 10 minutes, that's all you need to meditate. Um, but you know, meditation is different from shadow work, okay? So shadow and healing work, it takes um, more energy out of you. It's uh, more, it feels more draining. It actually isn't because when you do it, especially the way I do it in my guided meditation, you know, it's very uplifting at the end, even if you're facing darkness in the middle of it, at the end of it, you know, you're releasing and you do feel better. Um, but you know, um, <laughs> use your own judgment. You can do it once a week, once every two weeks. Like I said, it's up to you. You can use one chakra to focus on for the week and, uh, you can do a shadow work for your, you know, root chakra one week. And throughout that week, you can play frequency music in the background and, um, and things like that. So just test it out. You guys, that's, that's all it really is. It's trial and error. Just like with most things, find your own answers. Okay. Find what works for you. If you only got one thing from this video, use that one thing. If you got nothing, then oh well, you know, thanks for watching anyways. But I hope it helped. I really, really hope it helped you guys. Like, this has been in the works for a long time. For a long, la 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 long, long, long time, okay? I have been wanting to get this out for so long, but I wanted to make sure, um, <laughs> you know, I knew what I was talking about and I wanted to make sure I, I was in a very, very good headspace before I got it out to you guys. And I really hope you got something from this video. I hope, you know, it helped you change your perception on something or, you know, made something click whether you are going to do this exercise or not. But I really hope you guys do it. And if you do, let me know how it goes for you. I love hear hearing about other people's, you know, journey and their process because everyone's is so different and it's and it's really crazy to hear how we can all elevate and be on different levels through different methods right so if you got something from this and you're gonna apply it to something else that's amazing too so anyways you guys i'll be back with the rest of the chakra um videos and i will leave in the description box um the scripted meditation for this one with the onyx temple so anyways you guys thank you again stay flying free and i'll see you guys next time my foot went numb, I'm just trying to wake it back up. <laughs>